Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today we're going to be taking a look at the risk of a very powerful tropical cyclone moving across Western Australia by around next weekend and early next week. Then we're going to take a look at a developing system in the Coral Sea and then a more general look at the Australian weather. The thunderstorm seen in Queensland and New South Wales and also the near record run of heat that Perth is about to experience. So a lot to, uh, to come in this update. If you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. You can already see ex-tropical Cyclone Lincoln located over the Central Northern Territory, moving through quite some good pace right now. Um, towards the northwest of Tennant Creek, it's spinning itself up still very nicely and a lot of convection and uh, low sort of thick cloud that's moving around the center of the storm. And that's dumping quite a lot of rainfall where we're seeing 24 hour accumulations approach 200 to 250 millimeters. Certainly on the upper side of what I was expecting in terms of rainfall across the Northern Territory, but still within the scope of forecast. So hopefully everyone is prepared uh, through the central regions of the Northern Territory for up to 300 millimeters to fall, um, especially throughout today because by around Tuesday she should move into or I should say he he will move into Western Australia where it will likely slow down a little bit as it approaches Broome and then it'll move over the very warm waters of Western Australia and the West Australian region and will likely intensify quite significantly once again the Bureau of Meteorology now at a 50% chance of this tropical cyclone becoming a tropical cyclone once again over West Australian waters that is very bullish for the Bureau of Meteorology they're very confident that this is going to rejuvenate into a tropical cyclone once again so this forecast for the next couple of minutes at least is it's going to be very West Australian focused. After a couple of minutes, we're going to take a look at the Coral Sea system and where that could be impacting in around eight to 10 days time. And we're going to take a look at a more generalized picture of the West Australian weather. So skip, or, uh, skip around uh, to what part suits you the most. But taking a look at the system right now, it's Tropical Cyclone Lincoln located just towards the southeast of Wave Hill. And it's going to be moving through the Northern Territory throughout today. It looks like it's going to enter West Australia by around early Monday morning and the rain should ease off by Monday evening throughout most of the Northern Territory. Don't be fooled as you get to the evening hours and this model runs and you just see the storm blow up a tremendous amount of rainfall everywhere. That's mostly in the form of pulse thunderstorm activity. As you regularly see with the monsoon, you get these thunderstorms that blow up every single night. You will know what I'm talking about. And that's why we're getting such a broad scope of rainfall here. But there will be constant rainfall regardless of the time of the day around the center, within about 100 or 150 kilometers of the center, especially towards the south and the east of this system. You're gonna get this moderate rainfall that could last 24 to 36 hours and drop up to 200 millimetres over some locations. Now, we'll move through Western Australia, in particularly the Kimberley region, north of Halls Creek and Fitzroy Crossing. It's moving a little bit further north. The Axis G3 model was actually right with their forecast yesterday, by the looks of things. Moving through the Kimberley region Tuesday and Wednesday and re-emerging Wednesday afternoon, local time, uh, north of around Derby. Um, I think this is, uh, I can't really remember, I think it's Lombardinia up here uh, that it's going to move offshore uh, in the northern parts of Western Australia, where it will then have access to some of the most primed conditions for tropical cyclones and intensification that not just Australia but also the whole world has to offer at this time of the year. So intensification will be very rapid at this uh, point if the atmospheric conditions are conducive and they do look like they will be conducive as well. This is going to get to quite a high intensity if it uh, does get itself over a very good pocket of atmospheric conditions and also um, sea surface temperatures over Western Australia. It's looking very good for the system right now and quite a bad forecast for Western Australia. So over the next three days before we switched over to the long longer term forecast, we're expecting some pretty significant rainfall totals, especially today and into tomorrow morning around and outside of Tennant Creek and Elliot. And a further 200 millimetres can be expected to fall. As you get closer to West, Western Australia, it looks like the rainfall increases up towards three to 400 millimetres. So especially around, I guess this would be Docker River sort of area through here. Um, very, very remote part of the Northern Territory, but still there'll be some big cattle stations through here. Spend today that are uh, preparing for up to 400 millimetres, preparing for rivers to possibly go towards a moderate on the major flooding alerts, because in this part of Australia, you're talking about half a year's worth of rainfall to fall across 48 hours. The rainfall will be quite hit and miss in some locations, but still the risk of an extreme deluge here and there is certainly not being ruled out. And over the next five days, the rainfall, three to 400 millimetres will then uh, contract up into the Kimberley region. And it looks like the first really significant deluge will actually occur for the Kimberley region for the wet season. Um, in February. Can you believe it? It's been quite a dry start of the wet season up in northern Western Australia. Um, 
and it looks like it's going to continue as well. I'm not seeing anything on the forecast to suggest that we're looking out for a huge monsoonal burst up here anytime soon. But it does look like this storm, or i.e. cyclone, especially towards day four and day five of the forecast, is certainly going to be dumping quite a lot of rainfall and where it's going to be tracking. And you can see where it's going to be tracking through the rainfall swathe here. It is very condu uh, conducive amongst all of the models and also for the uh, last couple of days. Oh, I mean congruent between the forecast models and also uh, the day-to-day -day forecast here. It's been quite consistent over the past week or so with the track of this tropical cyclone making landfall between Carnarvon up towards Onslow, most um, likely on top of Exmouth as quite a powerful Category 3, maybe even a Category 4 strength severe tropical cyclone. I do reckon that the forecast will get backed off a little bit over the coming couple of days as this system moves into the West Australian waters just because of uncertainty and so forth. But right now, expect a severe tropical cyclone to make a landfall between Carnarvon and Caratha in a around, I would say, six to eight days time. So make sure you're watching the forecast very closely. It's probably a little bit too early to prepare for this system right now, but in around two or three days time, when we have a very good idea on what's actually going to happen, it'll certainly be go time to rush those preparations because it looks like this situation is actually becoming quite likely uh, right now. Now you can see as it emerges into the West Australian waters, it immediately becomes a cyclone and wastes no time getting up towards severe tropical cyclone status. You're looking at peak sustained winds just 24 hours over water and you're looking at peak sustained winds approaching 150 kilometers an hour. This is definitely a category three strength, severe tropical cyclone at this point, moving towards um, Exmouth. It looks like it will weaken significantly just before landfall, but I mean, look at this, a peak intensity of uh, 954 millibars. This is a strong system here, a very small system as well. So this also gives room for the tropical cyclone to be far stronger than what the forecast models are saying. And I've talked about this before through uh, what's called the model resolution, which is how much detail the forecast model, i.e. the ECMWF, can actually cram into a certain forecast. And because of the ECMWF, it's a high resolution model, but you're not talking about a mesosector model, which is a very high resolution forecast model, which means that it, considering this is a small system, it will likely be significantly stronger than 150 kilometers an hour. And small systems have a lot more potential to rapidly intensify as well. And that's for reciprocated in peak wind gusts. We're talking about peak wind gusts approaching 250 kilometers an hour, and that's gone up from yesterday as well. It looks like this system makes landfall on Exmouth with peak wind gusts of around 220, maybe about 200 for Exmouth itself. But you're looking at a very dangerous, very destructive tropical cyclone caught here. And this is quite a worrying situation indeed for Exmouth, Onslow and Coral Bay. So if you do live between Coral Bay and Onslow, you must be watching this forecast very closely. I'm gonna to switch to twice daily updates on this system tomorrow uh, in detail, just to cover this system in great detail because this is a significant threat to now Western Australia. Uh, but once again, there's no warnings of watches out in place yet. And I don't wanna fear monger people into thinking that this is actually going to happen because let's take a look at the GFS forecast. The GFS has been pretty unreliable with this system, but it has absolutely nothing whatsoever uh, to speak of in the uh, West Australian waters. Just a very weak low pressure system by the looks of things centered around here. So the GFS is calling for absolutely nothing to come of this, which is very interesting indeed because normally the GFS would be in line with the ECMWF here. It's the ECMWF that would normally copy the GFS model here, but it uh, certainly hasn't. However, that's not to say that this is not going to happen because if we switch it over to the Icon forecast model, they're calling for a system to be rapidly intensifying by around Thursday. And if you switch it over to the Access G3 model as well, same thing rapidly intensifying tropical cyclone over Broome as it gets itself into the waters of Western Australia. And it looks like it does some pretty strong intensification uh, through Friday and into Saturday as well. It doesn't get as strong as what the Eastern Relief suggests and it makes the landfall a lot closer to Caratha than what the Eastern Relief forecast model suggests. But the um, Access G3 model is slowly trending closer to what the Eastern Relief forecast has. So tomorrow's forecast is going to be very interesting. If you wanna see that, then please do consider subscribing. But yeah, it looks like next weekend in particular Saturday, we've got this risk of a severe tropical cyclone coming ashore on Exmouth or anywhere between, I'd say, Carnarvon and Carafa at this point. That means cyclonic winds expected between Carnarvon towards Port Hedland, maybe even towards Broome as well. I think it will be a cyclone as it re-emerges off the coastline. The Bureau of Meteorology is tracking this very closely. They're forecasting that this is going to do something um, pretty interesting in the West Australian waters. It looks like we're going to see a tropical cyclone out of this in the West Australian waters as well. So once again, to my West Australian audience between Carnarvon and up towards Broome, be watching the system very closely. Don't prepare 
prepare or don't be very scared of this system right now because once again, forecasts can and they will change. It's still a week away, but just be watching it very closely. And by around Tuesday or Wednesday, you'll have a very good idea on what this system is going to be doing. Now that's about, that's certainly enough ramble on the West Australian system. We're now going to take a look at the Coral Sea because you can see here the Eastern Gulf calling for something to be developing uh, towards the Solomon Islands. And I believe that's also in line with what the Access G3 model has to say. The um, Eastern Gulf doesn't call for anything significant at all by early next week. The GFS as well is very reluctant to call for anything as well. I think they call for a very weak tropical load briefly uh, north of sort of Lockhart River and Cairns, but it's the Access G3 model that's really caught my eye here. They're calling for a tropical cyclone as well on the Coral Sea, and the Access has actually been very good this cyclone season uh, with predicting systems beyond sort of the 10-day range. So the fact that the Access G3 model has got this on their forecast gives me a high amount of confidence to say that there will be a system in the Coral Sea by a around next Monday and Tuesday. It's definitely gonna be something we need to be watching. We've seen this on the forecast for the last two days now and once again, when you start to see model congruency and model um, frequencies and forecast frequencies like this, this is when you start to really believe these signals and think that, oh yeah, this is actually going to happen here. So once again, a system that we have to be watching but not uh, worrying about right now. And if I was to play this forecast uh, fully out, it does look like it gets quite strong up towards maybe severe tropical cyclone status and makes a landfall on top of Cairns. This is quite a weird track for a tropical cyclone. Normally when they form south of Port Moresby, they generally just track in the southeasterly trajectory, they very rarely sort of swing around and impact here at a very slow moving pace. Cyclones in the Coral Sea generally have a place to be. They move quite fast and they don't stick around in, the, in one place for a long time. But I guess Cyclone Curly and Cyclone Jasper are living proof that systems can't decide what they want to do this cyclone season. So again, I wouldn't rule this forecast out. And you can also see another swirl developing here closer to Vanuatu and New Caledonia. This would make it very interesting because if we saw a cyclone close to Vanuatu, it will likely be very harmful to this system here uh, in terms of wind shear and outflow. So this would be very interesting, but it definitely looks like we're gonna see a tropical low develop in the Coral Sea by early next week, something that we need to be watching very closely indeed. Um, in terms of maximum rainfall over the next 10 days nationwide, I haven't seen any really kind of big pronounced spots to be fair. There's one or two spots across Victoria and New South Wales associated with thunderstorm activity that we're going to be seeing over the next couple of days. I think um, as we go on to maybe Tuesday or so, it's going to get quite nasty in terms of thunderstorm activity in the evening uh, across parts of New South Wales and also uh, down in towards Victoria. Maybe it's Tuesday and Wednesday. It looks like the forecast is just Tuesday right now. And then when you get sort of beyond Tuesday, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, beyond about the three-day forecast. Thunderstorms become quite a challenge to forecast. It looks like Tuesday night we might get some pretty significant thunderstorms across Victoria, New South Wales, maybe even southeastern Queensland as well. They could dump quite a few uh, drops of rainfall in some locations around maybe Lismore, Coffs Harbour, Tamworth, and then down towards Canberra as well in the uh, Kosciuszko sort of area. It looks like actually quite a lot of rainfall falls around here near Jindabyne and Threadbar up to 200 uh, millimetres. This is the XSG3 forecast. Actually, I thought we are looking at the Eastern BF, but still the Eastern BF calling for widespread 50 to 100 millimetre totals with maybe one or two spots picking up up to maybe 100 millimetres in the more mountainous terrain up towards Lismore and Coffs Harbour and Grafton. Um, but yeah, apart from that, nothing really significant yet. The rainfall in Western Australia is going to be very dependent on the passage of ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln and how he moves around uh, Western Australia. So this will be something we need to be watching as well uh, because it looks like the goldfields might actually get a significant amount of rainfall once again from the tropical low uh, Lincoln that moves through here. So that will be something we need to be watching. And then to wrap this video off, we will take a look at the heat that Perth is about to experience. And as I said yesterday, this heat is no joke. Um, if you've got critical weather alert, alerts enabled on your iPhone. Your iPhone would have gone off at about midday yesterday. Mine certainly did. Um, my phone started beeping for about 30 seconds straight and I got the critical weather notification for extreme heat um, in Perth. And the Bureau of Meteorology has labeled this a significant threat to lives, especially those of the sick and the elderly and also the youth as well. So once again, a very good way to combat the extreme heat during the day if you don't have air conditioning is to go and sit in a public library or 
um, in a shopping center or something like that. Even if you were to like stand in a doctor's office, I guess um, if you're feeling unwell and you're going to go and stand in a doctor's office for a couple of hours just to really escape the heat but not need med medical attention, that's okay. But just get yourself to a place that's air conditioned if you really start to feel the heat. Because today, uh, Sunday, it's going to be very warm indeed, up to 46 for Jin Jin, 43 itself for Perth. I reckon it's going to get a little bit hotter than 43. Where I'm living right now, it's probably going to tickle 45 or so in my new house. Um, as we get towards uh, Monday, I think Monday there'll be a little uh, bit of reprieve from heat from the West Coast trough, but Tuesday is going to be the blistering hot day and an early maximum as well. I believe at 12 p.m. or so uh, is when the maximum will be, but it's going to be the wheat belt communities that really feel the heat on Tuesday, up to 45 or 46 of some locations. Uh, the Bureau of Meteorology really confident with the extreme heat as well, and it extends down towards Exmouth um, and Hopetown as well, and Ravensthorpe up to 48 degrees just on the coastline here. That is scorching hot. Um, if you're hiking the Stirling Ranges, beautiful spot to hike. I love hiking the Stirling Ranges, but again, I highly advise that you stay away from those Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I think the park will be closed itself uh, because it's just, and hiking in general around Western Australia is very, very much advised against uh, for the, I guess, the entire state until about Wednesday or so, when it should start to cool off in the lower west and the southwest and so forth. But yeah, it's going to be really hot indeed. The fire dangers are going to be through the roof. Um, my family's got property out in the Wheatbelt region and the fire dangers are already a very big concern Monday and Tuesday. We're going to be seeing these westerly winds, which could be up to 50 or 60 kilometers an hour sustained. And I mean, when you're coupling with that uh, 46 degree heat and also the fact that everything is just tinderbox dry across the Wheatbelt and also West Australia as a whole, um, it, it's going to be a very bad day for fire weather. I think we might see a catastrophic fire danger rating raised there. It's going to be a very um, hot day throughout Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So once again, just stay cool using any means possible. Probably not advice to go to the beach, actually. The sun's going to be very, very strong indeed. Um, and if you're at risk of getting extremely sunburnt, and maybe the beach isn't the best place to go, but I know shopping centers will be crammed with people trying to escape the heat. But again, they're a very good place to go. Same with the public library. I've said that before. And any other place that's public, it's got air conditioning, and it's, it, it's just a lot more pleasant than sitting at home baking in uh, ridiculous heat. I actually don't have the air conditioning set up at my home yet, and I did try and get a portable air conditioner yesterday after I made yesterday's video update. Uh, but man, they're so expensive. They're like 700 bucks or something. Uh, it's going to be very very, very hot, uh, that's for sure, in this house, and I'm not looking forward to it at all, so I might go and escape to a mate's house or something. But yeah, that's enough ramble on the Perth weather. It's going to be scorching hot, as I've said, for the last four minutes, and that heat's going to be across all of Western Australia by the looks of things as well that's not impacted by ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln. So um, it's not just Perth that's going to be feeling it, and I know I'm probably going to get a couple of comments saying that 45 is nothing, but for Perth, when you're talking about 15 degrees Celsius above the daily um, summer average, uh, 15 to 16 degrees, this this is some pretty extreme heat and it should also tickle the Perth record of 44.5 degrees Celsius. I reckon that's at risk of being either threatened or broken. Anyways, that's the latest on the Australian weather picture. There'll be more updates on this developing tropical cyclone situation for the Coral Sea and also for West Australia. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.